And before I give it the title, I want to go through some things first. I'm going to go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Hallelujah. Now, in the book of Daniel, the angel of the Lord told Daniel all kinds of events that things were going to happen and what was going to come. And then at the end of him explaining all kinds of things, especially with Israel, he said, listen, seal the book up. Because knowledge is going to increase. And when all of this begins to happen, especially knowledge. Well, knowledge is associated with technology also. It would increase. He said, then you'll know that the end is near. But until then, until the latter time, this book will be sealed until the end. Well, we're at the end. So things are being unfolded, released. Prophetic words, prophetic from prophets of many years ago that have prophesied things to come are coming to pass. Words that Jesus spoke, telling us to beware in the beginning of the sorrows, things are beginning to happen. There will be famines and wars and rumors of wars. And brothers will be against brothers. Well, look at right now. There are many in the body of Christ that are... And that's what the enemy's ploy is. But there's something more deeper, more sinister to this whole arena. And on Isaiah 14... In verse 12, would you read it with me? <clears throat> how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. That's phenomenal. Knowing that Lucifer, knowing that the creator that created him, now he's going to exalt himself above the creator. That's called pride. Yet the Lord's return was, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol or hell to the lowest depths of the pit. <laughs> so Lucifer wanted to be God above the true God. But, unable, but see, he was not unable to create, only to manipulate through deception and fear. Lucifer could never create nothing. That's all he can do is manipulate. And he does it through deception and through fear. And go to Ezekiel 28. Lucifer 28. I mean, Ezekiel 28. <laughs> Let's go to Lucifer. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Ezekiel 28, verse 6. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God. I don't know, maybe that's why I call it Lucifer, <laughs> because this is all about him. You have set your heart as the heart of a God. Behold, therefore, I'll bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of a slain in the midst of the seas. You will, still, they, will you still say before him who slays you, I am a God? But you shall be a man and not a God in the day of him who slays you. You remember, Lucifer will take possession of a man at some time. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of, the, of aliens. For I have spoken, says the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take a lamentation for the king of Tyra, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Now, who is he speaking about? Lucifer. 
He says, you are the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. I want you to understand something, that he was majestic. He was majestic. God created Lucifer with such beauty that others desired to be like him. He was God's right-hand man. He saw everything that God created. He knew all the formulas. He knew all the rules of creation. But he couldn't create himself. He knew all the laws. Now verse 13 it says, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, and jasper. Sa sapphire, and turquoise, and emerald with gold. Why? Because these were the things that were from the earth. Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe, and his position was on the earth. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day you were created. God's breath breathed through Lucifer to praise and worship in the universe. The earth was the mountain of God. You were the anointed what? Cherub who covers. Covers what? The universe with praise. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. That was the earth. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery darts, uh, fiery stones. That's when God created all things. He saw the creation from nothing to where God created things. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within. You sinned, therefore I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I, dis I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Your you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries, the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading, therefore I brought fire from your midst to devour you and turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. And all who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Now this is also prophetic of what's things to come. Amen. He was perfect in beauty. He was the anointed cherub. He was desired by everyone. He was a majestic being. Created by God Almighty. Revelation 12. Hallelujah. He was desired. He was desirable to be seen in his majestic beauty. In verse 1, let's speak it. Now a great sign appeared in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold a what? A great fiery red dragon having seven horns, seven heads and ten horns, and seven diadems on his heads. And who was this dragon? Lucifer. The majestic of God's creation. He was a dragon. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Those were the angels. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth. Now the dragon will stand against another woman called Eve to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and his throne. That's when Jesus was raptured. Then a woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there for 1,260 days, which is three and a half years. And it says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. That was in God's throne, in his area 
where he reigned. So the great dragon was cast out. Now look at, this is who the great dragon is. He's Lucifer, majestic being. The what? The serpent of old called the devil and Satan. All of them are the same people. Just different forms. I've shared before that Lucifer was a shapeshifter. Who deceives the what? The whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Now, they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. Why? Because their blood was cleansed. See, when you and I are born again by the Spirit, we get a new DNA. We are different. That's why you're different than other people. The other people are still of the world because they carry the DNA of the offspring of darkness. They're children of serpent. And verse 12, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth, to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows it is a what? A short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted a woman who gave birth to the male child. Who's the male child? Jesus. Amen. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. These two wings are known as Moses and Elijah. Known as the time of rapture. That she should might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for times, times, and half time. That's three and a half years. That's a removal of the church from the earth. From the presence of the serpent. Praise God. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Now, you've got to remember, the woman is also known now as Israel, because she is also the bride of Christ, as we are. And the dragon was enraged with the woman that he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you this, that there's going to be many people who become believers after the rapture. There's going to be many people who are going to repent thinking that they were believers and saved. But God's going to say, I don't know you. And they will be left for the rapture because they're still doing their will, not God's will. So you've got to come to a place of the end of you. That's why Jesus said, you must deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. So we see the dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan are one. They're the beast, the word beast means fallen angel when you read that in the word. There's war against the offspring of the true bloodline of Christ in the DNA and the seed of the serpent in his DNA. Go to Genesis chapter 1. You might call it a genetic warfare right now. Genesis chapter 1. Is that battle still going on? Yes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Then God said, let us what? Make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that on, creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. And in an image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So God 
created Adam in his image and likeness as an offspring. Now let me share something with you. When God created Adam, and then he took Adam's rib and then Eve came, they were both of the same DNA. They were actually eternal beings. You might say that there was a mixture of celestial and terrestrial all in one. And their DNA, see, DNA is made of something, it's just wild. And DNA has, is made of nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. That's how your DNA structure is. Each one of those represents a letter. Nitrogen is Y. I mean, hydrogen is Y. Nitrogen is um, H. Oxygen is W, and carbon is G. Carbon represents the physical realm, the physical. But if you take the first three, you have the word Yahweh. So your DNA is named Yahweh. Does everybody get it? You and I, Adam and Eve, was created in the image and likeness of Yahweh through the DNA that God gave them with his name stamped on their DNA. Does everybody understand? Cool. Cool. Now go to Genesis 3. This is where change came. Now the serpent was more cunning in verse 1 than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Why? Because God created, gave him the wisdom and everything. He was majestic. And she, he said to the woman, has God indeed said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You know, let me tell you, this is how the enemy brings doubt all the time. He always challenges truth. Always. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you what? Touch it. Touching means agreeing with it. Lest you die. Means agreeing with it. So we know it's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the serpent said to the woman, you're not going to die. God's a liar. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you shall be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, they already were like God. They were his offspring. So the woman saw that the tree was good for what? Food. That it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now we're going to go into somewhere that some people don't like to go to. But it's too bad. Remember, the serpent was majestic. He was a dragon. He seduced Eve then invited Adam into the same act. Eve was first alone with the serpent. And then she gathered her husband and introduced him to the same act. And they bore, she bore two children from that act. It was automatically a genetic change. Let's go a little further. It says, in the eyes of both of, them were, uh, both of them were opened, they knew that they were what? Naked. Self was birthed. And they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves coverings. They were trying to cover. There's always, when self, there's a person's always trying to cover themselves from being exposed. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, because God used to visit them every day in the cool of the day. But they used to see him face to face. This time they could only hear him because they became blinded by this participation. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees. And the Lord called to Adam saying, where are you be, man? Like he didn't know where he was. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, but I couldn't see you. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Fear gripped him. 
Remember, the devil uses the two great warfare objects of his. Deception and fear. That's all he's got. And he uses those to manipulate. And he said, who told you that? That you were naked. Have you eaten or partaken from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat or partake? Then the man said, to the, said, the woman whom you gave to me, she gave me this thing and invited me to this event. Blame always comes. See, when self is involved, there's a protection of self, and it's blame. Remember Flip Wilson, the devil made me do it? Some of you aren't old enough. Never mind. <laughs> but it's always the blame. Oh, that serpent did it again to me. No, you allowed him to do it. And the Lord said to them, what is this you've done? Woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I participated. See, to par eat is to participate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than any beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go. In other words, he was upright. He had legs. Hello. So we know that Lucifer took hold to present himself as the serpent. The word tree, because there's so many symbolic, symbolism in the Bible, the tree, word tree in the Bible represents spirit. You will know them by their what? Fruits. What spirits they associate with. And on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put hatred between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. So, a seed is an offspring. So when the Lord made this judgment on them, he already saw that she was pregnant. And he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his he heel. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sour and your conception. Why is that? Because of her sin. In pain, you shall bring forth children. So all you women that have children, you know the pain. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat, curse is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall, be, shall bring for, forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field, and in sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them because their own covering was insufficient. So God killed an animal as a sacrifice to maintain covenant with them. Remember, the bloodline is always associated with covenant. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil, and now lest he put his hand out and take of the tree of life and eat it and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground for which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed a cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, flaming sword, which turning every way to guard the way of the tree of life. Remember, Jesus is the tree of life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the serpent, the majestic dragon, seduced Eve, amen, bore two children. One was called Abel and one was called Cain. This is where the change of genetics happened, DNA change right here. And Cain was known as the wicked one. Abel was known as the righteous one. Or Cain was the, from the wicked bloodline and Abel was from the righteous bloodline. One was the seed of the serpent. One was the offspring of righteousness. So their bloodlines were different. Remember, bloodline is associated with covenant. Humanism begins here. There's no more 
celestial, terrestrial type of, it's now all carnal. All physical. Genesis 4. Verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him who? Seth, for God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel. So God replaced Abel with Seth, who, whom Cain killed. And, and as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and his name was Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. So we see that that righteous seed, the righteous bloodline from Seth, were now they were starting to call on the name of the Lord again. Prior to that, you had Cain. And they were not calling on the name of the Lord because they were offsprings of the serpent. Does everybody get this? Hallelujah. Genesis 6. Now we see the manifestation of everything. The complete manipulation. Now remember from the beginning what we read in, uh, about Lucifer is he wanted to be God. He wanted to be above God. Amen? So he wanted his own race. Genesis 6 verse 1, let's speak it. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Who are the sons of God? Angels. That they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. Well, how did those giants get there? From Cain. Amen? Remember, he was the, now the son of the serpent. So everything that he produced, offsprings, were produ actually Nephilims. So the giants were already there. Then you got 200 other angels that put on flesh, came into the world because they saw the women. But everything was to change the DNA. To manipulate and stop the true DNA of Yahweh to continue. Is everybody okay? And it says in verse 4, And there were giants on the earth in those days, and also after when the sons of God, which was 200 of them, you can read that in the book of Enoch, came in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were mighty men who were of old men of renown. Many of them have six toes, six fingers, and so forth. They were Nephilim. Some of them were 20, 30 feet tall. They were known as giants. And they continued to interbreed and breed and breed. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only ev evil continued. Why? Because the human state of beings was slowly d diminishing off. And that's all that was happening and covering the earth it was all the offspring of the serpent. Now they began to intermix. They began to have sex with everything. And they didn't care. It was totally perverse at that time. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I was sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, because he was upright. He was still of the clean blood, the bloodline. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. And perfect in his generations. In other words, he was uncontaminated. He was not defiled. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with what? Violence. Again, Satan can't create, only manipulate. He manipulated a race between the seeds, the fallen, to communicate, to Gather together the seeds of the fallen angels, the bloodline of Satan against the bloodline of Christ. Giants, Nephilims, 
hybrids. They're all the Antichrist life. So the enemy was trying to take the life force of God out of the DNA that God put in humanity. Is everybody okay? <clears throat> and Gen um, hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis 9 for a minute. Listen, this isn't just, this fight is continuously. It's been going on ever since. Now that technology has risen more and more, they can use other things to manipulate. DNA, trying to remove the DNA structure of God Almighty Yahweh out of the bloodline of our DNA. <clears throat> and Genesis chapter 9 and verse 8. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you, with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, every beast of the earth with, with you, of all that go out of the ark, and every beast of the earth. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall I shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall it be a flood to destroy the earth. In other words, the whole earth. Amen? Is everybody with me? So, but we still see floods now, right? But it's not destroying the whole earth. So that means the only way God is going to destroy from now on the whole place, the whole earth, and, and bring judgment on us through fire. And God said, this is a sign of the covenant which I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my what? My rainbow in a cloud. And it shall be for a sign of covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that a rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I'll remember my covenant which is between you and me. And you and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud. And I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all the flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. So when you see the rainbow, you know it's covenant. that God will never destroy the earth by the flood. But he will destroy it by fire. Go to the next verse. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japhat. And Ham was the father of Canaan. Ham was the father of Canaan. Now keep this in mind. These three were the sons of Noah. And from these the whole earth was populated. And Noah began to be a farmer and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of his own grapes, <laughs> his own wine. And he was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. What did he do to him? A homosexual act. Remember, listen, this is, this is reality. Why? Because Ham married an offspring. He married an offspring of a serpent. So that corrupt line, that corrupt DNA continued to come down. Now it went down to his, one of his sons, Canaan. And Canaan began to act just like they did. They were, they were having homosexual acts, everything. These are just nothing but demons and spirits and people. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. And then verse 25, then he said, curse be Canaan. This is Noah saying, curse be Canaan, a servant of servants. He shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. 
All the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. That's a long time. He definitely helped populate the earth, though. 900 years, he should have. Ham, again, married a Nephilim hybrid. Praise God. More children, Canaan, carrying the corrupt bloodline seed of the Antichrist, spirit, and sexual perversion, assaulted Noah while he was sleeping. In Genesis 19, in verse 1. Let's speak it now. Two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. In other words, he was reverencing God's presence. Lot was one of the city rulers. And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn in to your servant's house and spend a night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, no, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly, so they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked on love and bread, and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, men of Sodom, both old and young, and all people from every quarter surrounded the house. So the whole city came and surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. In other words, they wanted to have sexual, homosexual activity with them. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him, and said, Please, my brethren, do not do this wicked, so wickedly. See, now I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Nice dad. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they came under the shadow of my roof. Lot was willing to sacrifice his children to protect God's presence and what was getting ready to happen. And they said, stand back. Then they said, this one came in to stay here. And he keeps acting as judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man, Lot, and came near to break down the door. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house, the angels, with them and shut the door. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary in trying to find the door. Then the men of Lot, have you, and then the men said to Lot, have you anyone else here, son-in-law, your daughters, whom you have in the city, take them and come out this way. Now, this is powerful because remember, the Lord destroyed the same acts of the first generation of the offsprings with the flood. But he said he would never do it again, would he? Now we have it all again, don't, don't we? Yeah, verse 23. Then the sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zorro. Then the Lord rained what? Brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because he put a covenant that I won't destroy no more with the flood. He rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens so he overthrew those cities, all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities that, were, that grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a what? Pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And to this day, it's still the same. In fact, I was there. I took a piece of the ground. It was nothing but charcoal. Again, Sodom and Gore became a place of sexual perversion of homosexual acts influenced by Satan's antichrist spirits, possessing individuals to maintain a corrupt bloodline of the serpent. They were destroyed by fire and brimstone 
because of the covenant that God made with Noah. In Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. In verse 18. Romans 1 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifested in them for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are with what? No excuse. No excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, for were, and nor were thankful, but became full, futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchange a natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their thoughts or knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Is that happening now? Yeah, still. Being filled with all un unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are worshipers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to the parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Here's the kicker. Not only do the same, but also approve or vote for those who practice such things. Let me tell you, there's going to be a lot of people who the Lord's saying, no. No. You promoted and voted for those things that I hated. They're going to be a tremendous awakening. That's, trying, he's try, that's why he's trying to awaken everyone now. The wrath on all that promote and vote for such acts against the bloodline of Christ and the DNA of Christ will be judged. They will not enter. Your DNA is what is going to allow you into heaven. In John chapter 8. John chapter 8. In verse 43. That's why you must be born of the Spirit. And then you must maintain that born again state of being. Keeping yourself clean from unthing, unclean things. Not touching those things. In verse 43, let's speak it. Jesus said, uh, let's start at 42. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. Now listen to this. Those, these are individuals that say they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe the word of God. Oh, I don't read the Bible. I don't believe in that. Well, they're lost, living outside of salvation's truth. 
Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's word, believes God's word, reads God's word. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. So all these people that are saying that they're a Christian but don't believe in the word of God are not God's. They're not his. They're lost, living outside of salvation's truth. They can't listen to his word because they're not his. And they won't hear you because they're not his. Luke 17. Luke 17. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 22. 17:22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, "The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the son of man and you will not see it." And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that is flashes out of the part under the heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Is Jesus being rejected by a lot of this generation now? Yes. And as, in fact, you know, they can promote everything else in schools. It's amazing. They bring every religion in there, and it's okay. Everything is satanic. They do Ouija boards. They do, they're, they're, they're promoting, hey, man, what sex you want to be today? They're promoting perversion. Why? Because that Nephilim race is still interbreeding. They're still producing hybrids and offsprings. The DNA of God Almighty, Yahweh, is being prevented from re being restored. Remember, it was taken. Now it must be restored. And it was in the days of... But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Verse 26. And as it was in the days of what? Noah, so will also be in the days of the Son of Man. Are we in the days of Noah? Yeah. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Those are the two wraths of God that came. There's one wrath left, and you and I are not accounted for it. We will be raptured by that wrath. But God is trying to rescue as many people from that wrath. Even so, it will be in a day when the Son of Man is revealed. 31, in that day who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take away them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife who turned back. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. One will be taken, the other will be left. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. I was all about genetic warfare. You know, think about this. From the beginning when the Lord said, 
there will be enmity, hatred between your seeds. When Lucifer declared that he wanted to be above God and be like God, there's a genetic manipulation that's going on tremendously right now. Remember when they started GN GMO? That ain't no studio recording place or a movie place. Genetic modified vegetables, fruits. You know, now you get stuff where they got no seeds in them. Although I do like the watermelon because I hate taking seeds out. But it's still genetically made. <laughs> But when you think about it, what are they trying to do? All this genetic stuff made is removing all kinds of good things that keep your immune system up. Amen? You've got impartations through music, through videos, through all kinds of... Look at pharmakia. Pharmakia means black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. All the pain locations. Oh, take a pill. You're good. No, you're not. No, you're not. You want to go back to where you were? Take another pill. You go right back. But I'm hurting too bad. Hurt. I'd rather hurt than go back. Get in God's presence more, you won't have the problem. Amen? It's all about genetic warfare. GMO products have slowed the depopulation to alter the DNA of God. Well, the giants are still crossbreeding. Remember, there's new technology now. Amen? Now that there's new technology, it's advanced technology by the evil forces. It's to alter as much as they can. In fact, they create sickness, hello, so they can create a cure to it, and they can put a genetic marker in it to change the DNA of humans. And then they require you to get so they can continue to promote it and change the DNA. Do you understand that this is changing DNA? That's what it's doing. And people are ignorant of this. Ignorant of it. No idea. My, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's what the Lord says. Amen. There are 23 markers in the DNA. It only takes one to change it. There's this markers of the DNA to manipulate, the they attach. You know what's in the, the, those are the things that they're given now in, in this high technology? It's actually HIV. It's from the HIV virus. Remember, this is all about depopulation, isn't it? In fact, the inventor that invented this last thing that people are partaking of, Warned everyone, this is not to be made for humans. He said, do not give this to humans. Why? Because it has HIV in it. It's got a marker from the HIV. What is that doing to people? It's causing their own immune system to eat them. It will cause destruction to bones. Crumbling of bones, crumbling of the immune system. Heart, lungs, it causes the diminishing where the body begins to just destroy itself. Remember, this is depopulation effect. And this is a genetic warfare. There's nothing but genetic manipulation right now. You know, in the book of Revelation, it tells us all things that were going to happen. And, and some of the things have already started, even though they're not full-blown yet. Go to, and I'm going to close here at Revelation 13. In fact, let me tell you, the patent, in the patent number, there's a patent number that was given to this product that people are now taking, and it's number 666. Hello. Revelation 3, 13, sorry. Revelation 13, verse 11. Let's speak it. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a what? Oh, wow. He spoke like a dragon. Hmm. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. It causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound 
was healed. Sounds like a sickness that supposedly they're saying is healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. We don't chase signs, we chase truth. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes, he causes, he coerces. In other words, he threatens. If you do not partake of this marker, you'll lose your job. If you do not take partake of this marker, you will not get your benefits. If you do not partake, does everybody understand? That's called coercion. Both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a marker. What's this marker? It's an alterization of your DNA. On their hand or on their forehead. That no one may buy or sell or go into a restaurant. Hello? Or go to a store and purchase goods because they're not carrying the marker. Except one who has the mark or marker. The name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is the wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of the man. His number is 666. Again, everything is about genetic alter manipulation. To create the race of the offspring. That's what this is all about. It's a fight. Antichrist, Christ. Antichrist, Christ. What? The DNA. Nobody gets in heaven with any other DNA than that which says Yahweh. Nobody. So when you and I were born again in the spirit, washed by the blood of the Lamb, our DNA changed. It was no longer connected to the earth. I'm no longer Italian. Hello? I'm, we're no longer our traditions. We're no longer Irish, Spanish, German. No, we are Christ. You want to stay that nationality? Then receive the mark. I'm a new creation of Christ. Old things pass away. All things become new. Traditions are changed. Everything's changed. Everything. All things must pass away. Amen? And all things become new. We are awakened to this reality. We must pass this reality on to others and warn others so they don't continue to do the same thing over and over and over. Amen? Let's try to get people to repent for receiving the mark or this marker and get cleansed by the blood. It's nothing but produced by fear, isn't it? That's all this is. Heck, your immune system is three times stronger than anything that's out there. But people are lied to because of the father of lies, who's the devil. But he and us is greater than his world. Amen? And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us because we are more than conquerors. Praise God. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise today for releasing this information to us in a time of such genetic manipulation. Lord, but our DNA is your DNA. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Pray your hearts for communion, and you may bring up any time.